Well, discrete random variables take on specific values, and we can assign probabilities to those specific, specific values. A continuous random variable takes a value over entire intervals. So instead of calculating the value of individual specific numbers, we calculate the probabilities associated with intervals. The probability density function is what allows us to do these calculations, and it assigns weights to infinitesimally small intervals. So suppose I have a, a, a probability density function, and here we'll draw a probability density function, and I'm interested in a specific value x, so here's our value x. The value of the function f of x is not going to be the probability of x itself, but the probability of a little interval width dx, the probability that x is in that interval, the probability that x is in the interval from little x to little x plus dx, is going to be equal to the value of my density function times the width of my infinitesimally small interval. So if I'm interested in the, cap the uh, probability that I'm in an entire interval, so for example, the probability that I am between A and B, I need to add up all of these infinitesimal contributions. And the way that I do that is with an integral. I would integrate from A to B the value of my density function integrated with widths dx. So this is what the density function does. It gives weights to infinitesimally small intervals, and if I want to calculate a probability over an interval, I need to add those all up using an integral. So for example, think about this random variable. x is continuous. It has a density given by 1 half x on the interval 0 to 2. So we know that the values of my random variable have to land in the interval from 0 to 2. They can't be outside. Now if I'm interested in the probability that x equals 1, that is 0. Probability that x equals 1 has a value of 0. What the density says is if I'm interested in the probability of being in a small interval around that point. For example, I might say What's the probability that I'm between 1 and 1.1? Then the probability can be approximated using the density. The probability that 1 is less than x is less than 1.1 is going to be approximately equal to the value of my density, f of 1, times the width of my interval, 0.1. And so the value of my density is half times 0.1, and I get 0.5 times 0.1 equals 0.05. Now, this is only approximate because we really should be doing an integral. You see, if I were to zoom in on that interval from 1 to 1.1, I actually get a fairly wide interval that in and of itself could be split into lots of little pieces. In each of those intervals, I would need to calculate the height of the density, multiply by the width of the little subinterval, and add them up. And in the limit, I would get an integral. So in the limit, I get an integral from 1 to 1.1 of 1 half x, the density, times the little width dx, and I add those up through integration, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, I get an antiderivative to help me answer the question. If I evaluate my antiderivative at 1.1 and at 1, and I subtract those values, I recover the actual area. So plugging 1.1 into x squared, I get 1.21. Plugging 1 into x squared, I get 1 also multiply by a fourth, so when I calculate that I get 0.0525, which is not quite the same, but it's very close to the 0.05 that we calculated using the approximation. So it's integration that we use to calculate total probabilities. To try to make this even more tangible, 
what I've now done is I've simulated this probability distribution in R. I've generated a thousand different data points. And so those are plotted below. So what I want you to notice is that the higher density, near 2, I have a lot more dots. At my low density, near 0, I have a lot fewer dots. Plotting a histogram allows me to look at those dots and figure out how many I have in different locations. In other words, I'm binning my data values. So for example, in this first interval, from 0 to 0 0.2, I counted up nine dots out of a thousand, and so in that interval I have nine out of a thousand of my points from zero to two. The second interval from point two to point four, I had, I had counted 24 dots, and so there were 24 out of a thousand points in that interval. Now a probability density is the probability per unit length, so if I look at this first interval, uh, it was my probability was nine out of a thousand, so point 0, 0, 0,009, my interval width was 0.2, and so my density is going to be equal to 0 0.045. And so the histogram has a height of 0 0.045 on that uh, interval. The second interval has a probability of 0.024, and my interval width is 0.2 and so when I divide 0 0.024 divided by 0 0.02 sorry, 0 0.2 I get a probability density of 0.12 so I can draw a 2, 0.12 and so that's the height of that rectangle so each of the rectangles in this histogram don't represent actual probability it's the probability per unit length if I do a much bigger simulation, for example, this time I did 10,000 data points, I can create a histogram and use a lot more bins, a lot narrower interval widths, and it looks very similar to the density function. So I can now start to think about calculating probabilities of intervals. So suppose I was interested in calculating the probability that my x random variable is between 0.5 and 1.5, I'm interested in this interval, um, I can calculate that probability by looking at my histogram, looking at the density of the interval, multiplying by the width of the interval, and that product gives me a probability associated with each small sub-interval. Now, in the current histogram, I have 20 data points, and so my total probability from my simulation is calculated as a sum over those 20 rectangles of the density times the width. Now if I were to repeat the simulation in R and do even more data points, as the number of data points goes to infinity, this histogram approximates this density function even better. And so I can replace this histogram with the actual density evaluated at some point in each subinterval times the width of each subinterval. Once I make this transition to using the actual density function instead of my simulation histogram, I can think of the number of rectangles, currently as 20, as an actual variable. So here, n, capital N, represents the number of rectangles. So if I think about that number of rectangles, I can imagine a limit. As those number of rectangles goes to infinity, the sum of the density at a, some point inside the interval times the width of the interval, where this interval width is the total width divided by how many subintervals. Now, what is this limit? This is exactly what we mean when we talk about, in calculus, the limit of a Riemann sum. So this is exactly what we mean by a definite integral. The integral from a half to 1.5 of the density function times dx represents this limit of a Riemann sum. Evaluate the density function, multiply it by a little width, and add up all those contributions, taking a limit as the number of subintervals goes to infinity. And so the calculation of the total probability is exactly what we mean by an integral of the density. Now that we've talked about probabilities of intervals, we can start to talk about expected value. So let's think about the sample average. 
If I have my 10,000 data points, my sample mean is simply you add all 10,000 values that I observed and divide by how many points I saw, 10,000. Now if I thought about each little subinterval, on each interval I could imagine calculating the sample mean for that interval. And the sample mean times the number of points in that mean, that would give me the sum of all the data points in each interval. And so if I were to add over all of the subintervals, the sample mean times the number of data points that went into each sample mean, and then divided by the 10,000, I get the exact same calculation. But this number of data points divided by 10,000 is exactly the relative frequency that we saw of the data points in the subinterval. And so I can regroup this and think about taking the sample mean of each subinterval, multiply it by the density times the width, and that'll give me the exact same calculation. So this is starting to look like our earlier calculation, with the exception that I still have an extra piece. I have an xk. Now if I let the number of data points go to infinity, my average is going to go to some x value that's in the subinterval. My density is going to go to the true density at some point in the subinterval, times the width of the subinterval. And now I have a Riemann sum. If I then let the number of subintervals go to infinity, the Riemann sum becomes a definite integral. And so I'll integrate from 0 to 2, that's the range of my random variable, x, so this is representing the average value of x, times the probability of an infinitesimally small interval, the density, f of x, times the width, dx. So this is how expected value is com computed. It's an integral. The expected value of x will be the integral from 0 to 2 of my function x, so I'm taking expected value of, times the density dx. This is the probability of a small subinterval. To compute this, this expected value, I replace the density with its formula, 1 half x. So in this, I have x coming from what I'm taking an expected value of times the density dx, 1 half x dx. This is the probability of a small subinterval. As soon as I simplify that and rewrite it as 1 half x squared dx, I no longer have a good probabilistic interpretation. It's just a definite integral, just calculus, 1 half x squared dx. Because I know how to find an antiderivative, 1 sixth x cubed, I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to compute this definite integral. I evaluate the antiderivative at 2 to get 1 sixth of 8. I evaluate the antiderivative at 0 to get 1 sixth of 0, which when simplified is 4 thirds. The expected value of this random variable is 4 thirds. This is what motivates the definition of expected value. If I have any continuous random variable x with density f of x, the expected value is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x, that's what I'm calculating the expected value of, times the infinitesimal probability of each subinterval, f of x, the density, times dx, the subinterval width. If I have a second random variable, y, that's a function of my random variable x, then the expected value of that new variable, the expected value of g of x, is also an integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of x, that's what I'm calculating an expected value of, weighted by the probability of a subinterval, and I add up over all the subintervals. Now in practice, a density does not have the domain from minus infinity to infinity, so these integrals from minus infinity to infinity get replaced by the appropriate integral on which f of x is defined. Everywhere else, f of x is zero, and so the integral doesn't contribute anything.